Now I'm not going to tell you that you absolutely need an axe. A good quality bushcraft knife will go a long way to get a lot of work done. Especially if you're you're just going in, you're just a very basic camper, going in and have a little fire or things like that. Play around, whittle a few sticks and things. A good solid knife like this will definitely handle a lot of that. Pair this, uh, this knife with a decent saw, maybe a silky, a folding saw, or maybe a bowl saw or something like that. And uh, you really got a good setup that'll tackle pretty much anything you need to do in the woods. Anyone's been following me for a little while, I'll know I love my axes. For me, there's nothing that can uh, can replace an axe in my kit. I never go out without one, uh, one of some size or sort. Uh, I've collected a few of them now, and to me, it's just an indispensable tool. Uh, one. See, in my opinion, here's, here's what I think. Um, with a good knife, you can accomplish the tasks that a knife can handle. With a good saw, um, there are certain tasks you can handle. But to me, an axe will take care of all of it. If you just had a knife, you're going to be pretty, uh, pretty hard off if you get really stranded in the woods. With just a saw, same thing. You're not going to be able to get everything done. With a good axe, a good sharp axe, I don't really think there's anything you can't do from driving stakes and poles and building shelters to felling heavy materials. If you've got a good edge on it, then essentially you've got a knife. So an axe covers it all for me, and uh, it's just something about an axe, just such a beautiful thing. I'm going to run through a few of my ideas on uh, how to choose an axe. In my opinion, choosing your axe will come down to about two things. Um, what are you going to be doing with the axe and what kind of person you are. Um, if we look at something like this right here. This is my Grant. This is my Pro Series uh, Grant axe. And I do love this axe. It's got a two and a quarter pound head. 27 inches total length. It's got a fairly hefty profile there. And uh, this is a great axe no doubt. But for me just too much of an axe. If I'm just going in bushcrafting, camping, hiking, these types of things, I mean this this is a heavy axe, a very heavy tool, and I just don't want to lug all that weight. I can barely hold it on, on the end like this, hold it upright. So to me this is un, an unnecessary uh, system. What I mentioned before, my two points just referring back, what kind of person you are and what kind of work you're going to be doing there may be a person out there that's going to need to do some big work. You're going to need to fall some big wood. Maybe you live in an area that um, the only wood out there you can access is some real big, probably five, six, eight inch diameter wood. You're going to want something like this. A smaller axe is not going to do it. Also, maybe if you're a real big person. I'm uh, not real tall. I'm about five, six. Maybe you're six, two. You want a bigger axe. Maybe you want something. You'd call this a boy's axe. Generally anything from 24, 25 to about 28 inches you'd consider a boy's axe. And this is a great option, but it's just not for me. Similarly, this is a beautiful axe. This is 24 inches overall. This is getting a little closer. Nice thin handles, a bit lighter. This is a... Uh, Give you guys a little look. This is a Halt Brooks that I recently restored. It's got a beautiful feel. I'd consider carrying this. It's a little closer to, to what I like, but again, still a little bit big for me. Um, you don't have that one-handed use. Not for me anyways. Again, maybe if you're a real big fella, maybe this would be uh, more suitable for you. But in my opinion, not a real great camp axe. It's just a, just a little bit too big too heavy packing. Next we have a couple options like this. A lot of people like hatchets. These are a couple of nice little hatchet options. 13 and a half inches, 14 and a half inches. This is an, a vintage Ardex head that I restored. I mean great little hatchet and feels so nice in the hand. Real nice. This is a Grant hatchet. These are shaped nice. I know a couple of my uh, a couple of my good friends have these. 
and uh, real high value, just a good axe. But I, I never really liked hatchets. Um, they're great for around the house, and and sure, they're great to take in the woods and and uh, a little bit of light duty work. Again, it comes down to the person, what you want to do with it, and and how big a person, maybe someone younger or someone smaller, would would benefit from something like this. But to me, you just you can't get the work done. Just not enough. Uh, not enough weight, not enough length to really fill any amount of woods. You just beat yourself out. So I'm not going to be looking at hatchets for my pack. Left on the table are the three most favorite axes in my collection for uh, for bushcrafting and in the woods. What you have here is 19 inches, 19 and a half inches. 18 and a half, 19 inches. So these here are, are almost identical in length. This is the Wetterlings. It's the Wetterlings Large Hunter. This would be uh, comparable to the Grand Spurs Brooks Small Forest Axe. Gorgeous axe. These two here, fantastic axes. All these to me, once you're getting down in this length, you have enough weight to fell some serious wood if you needed to. You have enough length to fell some serious wood. It's also small enough, you can, you can use it like a hatchet, one-handed use. You can choke up on it, use it like a knife. And all these three axes are going to allow you to do this. So these, highly favored. To me, this is the, your perfect, this is your uh, ideal camp axe size. This wireling's here, absolutely love it. Now, again, this is just my opinion. Uh, these axes can pretty much tackle it all. They're right in the middle. You're not ideally you don't want to fell any big timber with something this size, but uh, it can do it. It's the thing, and it can do the smallest of tasks like feather sticking. Now, when we get into this size category, what do you actually want in the axe head? So let's uh, let's take a look here. These are all small little heads. Very nice size design. They'll all do lots of great work. For me, um, when I'm hiking around the camp fire and such, I gotta be able to, like I said, choke up on my axe. I wanna be able to do some fine work. Um, so it needs to be a good quality, quality steel that'll take and hold a good edge. I need to be able to fell wood, so it needs to be able to make a good bite, so not too thick of cheeks. But also, I need to be, need to be able to split wood, okay? So let's take the first candidate here. This is a, an antique Wetterlings. I had this axe for a while. This is a gorgeous axe. And look at that profile. It's a super thin, super thin axe. So this thing will really cut. It will really bite in that wood. Okay? So this will be great at felling some wood. But how do you think that axe would do splitting? Not the best. It's going to sink in there. It's not going to have that width to, to pop wood apart. So this is great for felling some wood, but not, not as good for splitting check tasks. Compare that to the Wetterlings. Now we're talking. See the difference what I was talking about? This Wetterlings here has the weight here. Nice long taper even it's a gradual taper so it's going to be great at sinking in taking a big bite out of wood it's also got those cheeks so you're going to be able to split this German axe head here quite similar to the Wetterlings you've got those nice thicker cheeks so it's going to be a great all-around splitting cutting It'll just make a great tool so these are just some things to keep in mind when you're trying to pick out an axe like I said to sum it up, my preference would be somewhere around this range. Uh, 19 to 21 inch axe usually falls in this camp axe size. Um, I would choose something that has a little bit of meat in the head there. Uh, one thing, that's one thing, uh, one of the reasons I chose the Wetterlings over the Grand Spurs Brook Small Forest axe is the Wetterlings head, or sorry, the Grand Spurs axe head is shaped closer to this one here. Really thinly ground 
uh, narrowed in cheeks. And for me, for good canbacks, I want a little bit of meat there. If you look at something like the Les Stroud Bushman's Axe, it's designed like this. You got nice, some thickness here, some real thickness, so it gives you a little more weight in the head, but also lets you split nicely. Just some ideas to think about, guys. If you're looking for an axe, keep some of these ideas in mind. Comment down below, please. Let me know if, if I helped you at all, or if you just like seeing the pretty axes. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Leave me a comment. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.